Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. On Friday, Xavier wrote about how various backup files can get you in trouble with Apache if you leave them behind in the document route. Now, the solution that Xavier suggested, and that's of the standard solution to this, is first of all, don't keep those files in the document route, and then also consider blacklisting certain extensions. Blacklisting is always dangerous because it's easy to miss a particular extension that may be used, for example, by an editor as a backup file that you were just not aware of. So today I wrote a little bit a diary with a different approach for you, whitelist extensions with Apache that you would like to serve. This way you avoid the issue of having to enumerate all the bad extensions that could possibly happen and at least for a reasonably simple website, the whitelisting approach should work just fine. As usual, any feedback regarding the scripts that I posted is appreciated. They work for me, but I certainly have not tested them for all possible configurations of Apache. And of course, it would also be nice to extend it, for example, to Nginx or maybe even for mod security, which I haven't done yet. And WordPress released version 471. Among the vulnerabilities being fixed in this version is the famous PHP mailer vulnerability that we have talked about around New Year. Now, it wasn't really clear whether or not this vulnerability was actually exploitable in standard WordPress installs. But while the PHP mailer vulnerability is probably the best known, there are also a number of cross-site scripting and cross-site request forging vulnerabilities that are being addressed in this latest security update of WordPress. So don't disregard this update just because you think PHP mailer isn't a high priority for you. The other vulnerabilities being fixed with this update are worthwhile to being patched by themselves. And the WordFence blog is reporting about a fairly tricky new phishing attack against Google users. But of course, this attack could also be adapted for different similar services. In this case, it all starts out with one of your contacts being compromised. And the first part is actually not that new that the attacker then uses the contact list of that compromised user in order to send additional emails but this particular attack goes a little bit further by using an attachment name that actually was in a past legitimate email from that user these attachments when they're being sent to the next victim are actually no attachments at all instead when you click on them they just trigger a data url that will then present a fake google login page since you do know the source this particular attachment came from, since you're using Gmail, and since you already recognize the attachment, of course, more users fall for this particular scam than for prior phishing attempts. Not much really Google can do about this. That's why I say it's probably going also to affect other similar webmail systems. Data URLs are a browser feature. In this particular case, the data URLs are formulated to actually display in the beginning something that looks like a legitimate Google login URL. So that makes it even more difficult for a user to recognize uh, these attacks as a fish. The best and maybe only defense against these attacks is two-factor authentication. In that case, the attacker will not be able to log into your account with just username and password. And for a while now, it was known that it's possible to fingerprint browsers with fairly good accuracy by looking at various browser features, like for example, the JavaScript canvas. Now this technique just has become even better in an extension to that method that actually takes advantage of differences in how GPUs render and shade data. According to the data set that the researchers use to develop this technique, instead of 90.8% of browsers that they were able to identify using the old technique, they're now all the way up to 99.2%. 
2%. Now, only a 10% increase here, but nevertheless significant. And, well, it's now just about 100% of browsers that are able to be fingerprinted using this technique. Now, one of the techniques that's being used to accomplish that is the WebGL API in JavaScript that exposes the graphics card directly. Of course, that's something that you are able to disable in some browsers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.